There's only a few things I really care about in life. My body, my pad, my ride, my family, my church, my boys, my girls, and my porn. My body, my pad, my ride, my family, my church, my boys, my girls, my porn. Body, pad, ride, family, church, boys, girl. So uh, I wanted to start out by talking about this movie almost as a, like a, a companion piece or an indirect sequel to one of my favorite movies, a movie you may have heard of called 500 Days of Summer. Yeah, that's a and, good comparison. Yeah, and I was you know, thinking that both of them are about guys <clears> whose <throat> views of love and of life are so misconstrued by different sorts of media, Hollywood romances or porn. Yeah. When you were making this, did you, did you see them as different sorts of like companion pieces or a sequel to one another? Absolutely, man. I'm really glad you bring that up because uh, I think the comparison is a, an apt one. Nice. Um, both characters, the... The character I play in 500 Days of Summer, whose name is Tom, and the character I play in Don John, whose name is John, they are both pretty selfish guys. And they have a lot of similarities, even though they have very different styles. Um, and they both, like you said, they, they have very specific expectations of what a woman is supposed to be and what love is supposed to be and what sex is supposed to be. And uh, they kind of have their eye more on those expectations, these, these fantasies of theirs than they do the reality. Right. And right. Uh, this is something I always say about 500 Days of Summer, because people often ask me, how could Summer have dumped Tom? How could she do that? She's terrible. And, and I always say, like, Tom deserved it. Tom's kind of a selfish guy in this movie. Tom's not listening to her. It still breaks my heart to hear you say that, man. That's but, it's, but it's true. If you watch him, it's all, it, the movie's told from his perspective, so it's hard to see sometimes his shortcomings. Would you like to see 500 Days of Tom? Yeah, right? From Summer's perspective, I bet you'd see kind of a selfish guy who never listens to what she says, mm -hmm. who's kind of self-obsessed and, and sort of projecting these, these, these images onto her. Right. Um, who's, in, in your perspective, whose view of the world is, is more wrong, Tom Hansen or John? I think they're kind of equivalent, mm -hmm. to be honest. They're different, of course, but I think they're kind of equivalent. And, and both of them, by the end of the movie, grow up a bit. Right. And, and so both Don John and 500 Days of Summer are coming of age stories where, you know, by the end of 500 Days of Summer, you're starting to see the beginnings of a guy who is, is making more of himself and not just relying on some fantasy of a woman to, to render his life meaningful. Um, and by the end of Don John, you're also you're seeing a guy who's starting to break out of this mold, this routine, this... Um, this specific idea of what a man is supposed to be and, and begin to sort of pay attention to the reality in front of him. Sure. Now, in terms of uh, actors who have made that transition to directing, a lot of times they, they start out by, by directing what they know. Clint Eastwood, his second film was a Western because he knows Westerns. Ben yeah. Affleck's first two films were, were about Boston because he knows mm -hmm. Boston. Joseph Gordon-Levitt starts out directing a film about porn addiction because? <laughs> well, I, you know, so I grew up as, as an actor working right. in TV and movies. And Don John is very much about how media often leads us to objectify people, to treat people more like things than like people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I think that in our culture, actors are sort of treated in a weird way, sort of more like things mm -hmm. than like people. But I don't think it's just actors. I think right. everyone experiences that. It's probably happened to you at some point. I think it happens to everybody. You can just tell right. that the person you're talking to isn't really paying attention to you isn't really listening to what you're saying. But Just so you know, I'm listening right now. I'm I can in. tell you are, man. I can tell you are. And I don't feel objectified <laughs> by you. Good, good thing. No, but you, you know what I'm saying. Like, we, we have a tendency to pigeonhole each other and put each other in boxes and labels and, and, uh, and pin these expectations on each other rather than actually connecting. That's her? That's definitely her. She's a dime. Oh, this girl's more than a dime for all. Oh, my God. Were you in love with this girl already? I've seen this girl. Oh my god, what's her name? What's her name? Why'd you say yes to me? I'm just gonna have to wait to find out. All right, I got time. You're cute, I like you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Listen, you wanna know the truth? You're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. You like movies? I don't watch too many movies. The pretty woman, the pretty man, I mean, they drive off into the sunset. Everyone knows it's fake. I love movies like that, you yeah. know? Right. But they watch it like it's real life. Oh, oh. Baby. What?
heck are you doing? I was just reading emails. No, you weren't. Now that, that you have this newfound perspective of, of from the director's point of view, if you could go back and look at one of your past films from the director's standpoint, from the director's point of view, which one would you be most interested in, in looking at again? Oh, man. That's really interesting. Uh, that's a good question. <clears throat> well, I mean, to begin answering that question, I would say that, that while we were shooting Looper mm -hmm. and The Dark Knight Rises and Lincoln, I... I had most of this written and was already sort of beginning to plan to make Don John. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was really paying a lot of attention to what Ryan Johnson and Christopher Nolan and Steven Spielberg were doing. Right. Um, but as far as, as going back and, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe the movie also that you just brought up, 500 Days of Summer. Mark Webb is a master awesome. filmmaker. Awesome guy. And he's doing great things with Spider-Man right now. He's yeah, doing, yeah, he certainly yeah, is. He's and, doing cool and things. And I'm sure he's going to make a, a, you know, 100 great movies. Right. Um, but that, that movie, here's one thing I love about it that I think it also has in common with Don John is it, it uses movie language mm -hmm. to its advantage. Right. And you have to sometimes question, you know, like there's a narrator in 500 Days of Summer. And he's got this very reliable fatherly voice. And he says, Tom knew for the first time, <laughs> blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Well, if you really think about it, there's a play there. There's a bit of satire, and he's using the filmmaking language. He's using that reliable, fatherly voice to sort of lead you down a certain path. But it's an unreliable narrator. I love stuff like that. Right. And uh, and Don John has that right. too. You know, because John speaks in voiceover. Right. And usually, when the main character speaks in voiceover, you can kind of trust what they say. But you can't necessarily right, you trust can't what always. John right. says. Exactly. He's he's. Because he's got his own sort of delusions going right. on. I want to talk about what I walked away with from this movie. Because all the descriptions I've read, you know, the classified as a comedy. And I, I was laughing the whole time. It is mm -hmm. an incredibly funny film. But walking away, I couldn't help but feel sad for a lot of the characters in this movie. Mm -hmm. As the writer and director, if I tell you I walked away from this movie sort of feeling sad, would you mm -hmm. say I'm looking at it wrong? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I like movies that different people can take different ways. And I think it's accurate to call it a comedy because it's funny. But it's also not a comedy like a yuck, yuck, goofy, laugh a minute comedy. Right. You know, it's, it's more like 500 Days of Summer or 50-50 or, you know, The Graduate or Shampoo or, you know, movies like that, that where the comedy comes from the fact that you know people like this mm -hmm. and the emotions feel kind of real and it, uh, it's, right. it reminds you of life and it makes you laugh. Exactly. You know, it's more that kind of comedy. Gotcha. Gotcha. She caught me watching porn. Yeah. That's it? Right? Oh! How do you watch that? How do you watch all the stupid movies that you watch? Movies and porno are different, John. They give awards for movies. They give awards for porn, too. So, there's only a few things I really care about in life. I don't know if I really want a wife and kids. Oh! You look what you did. I look like a grandmother. But do I have any grandchildren? If you want to lose yourself, you have to lose yourself in another person. It's a two-way thing. I thought you were different. And maybe it's time to try something new. I was wondering if, uh, flashback for a second, I, I'm going to completely be honest, a majority of my childhood is defined by watching Angels in the Outfield on a <laughs> loop over and over again. Uh -huh. As a child actor, what is the piece of work that you are uh, most proud of, and what is the piece of work that, that is maybe most cringeworthy to you? You know, man, I, I really don't cringe at stuff. I, I got to say, I, I, I live life without regrets because they're useless, you know? Um, but... Um, I would say going back on, on movies that I've done, the one that makes me feel the best, and I like a lot of stuff that I've done, but I like Looper a lot. That was on my top 10 list last year. Thanks. Well, the thing is kind of how I measure success for myself as an actor is if I see somebody else when I'm watching whatever I did. If it reminds me of me, I'm like, ah, I blew that, you know? But if it just seems like somebody else, that's what I was going for, because I, I like transforming. I like actors that are chameleons, or that disappear into the story. Right. And so I, I really like Looper, and obviously it helped to have all the makeup on right. that made me look like Bruce Willis, but, um, but also really hard at coming up with a voice and, and, and mannerisms and everything that, that uh, were really different from myself. And, and the same goes for John, actually. I'm, I'm really pleased with this as an actor, even though it's the first time I got to direct a, a film, I really, <laughs> as, as acting is something I'm really proud of because 
he's really different. The character is really different from me. He talks different. He walks different. He seems different. He's just he's very very different from me. And and uh, and I think it's a, it's thorough, you know. And I, I gotta say, I, I feel the same way about uh, Scarlett and and her performance in the movie. She's so different than she, you've ever seen her before. Right. She's got it's, it's insane, you know man. this voice and and it's just so spot on. And the way she moves, the way she you know her nails and how she is with her hands and her. Her whole charm and demeanor is so different from how she normally is. I mean, it's so thorough. I, I love what she did in this movie. When you make a movie like Don John, when you make a movie about like, you know, like 500 Days of Summer that is so much about different sorts of relationships, do you look back at your own personal romantic relationships differently? Does it give you a new perspective of like, oh, I never looked at it that way before? Yeah, sure. I, I think that from every movie that I do, I try to learn something about myself. That's one of the things I love so much about the art and the craft of, of acting and storytelling is, you know, you do learn about yourself. And, and I think that I grow I, every time I play one of these characters. I take a little bit of them with me, for better or worse. But uh, I try to take their strengths more than their weaknesses. I want to end by just kind of talking about some of my, my favorite romance movies of the last decade have been something like A 500 Days of Summer, something like A Blue Valentine, something about a more. Movies that, in a way, for lack of a better word, show the crap side of love, so that <laughs> you know, love sometimes sucks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really interesting. And what do you think that that says about Hollywood, that like, that's, though that topic has provided the best sort of movies about love recently, mm -hmm. showing how much love has the potential to suck? I don't know. I think, I think the best ones always have, whether you, whether you talk about, you know, Annie Hall or, or, or shampoo or, uh, you know, or, or go back even further to, well, I'm going to fail to come up with an example right now. Um, you know, I, I think movies that show both sides of the story are more interesting because they're more like real life. Because life is simple. Life is really complicated. And while it's sometimes easy to compare our real lives to these sort of simple stories, fantasies, that we enjoy on screen, that's what they are, they're fantasies. And they don't map onto real life. And if you compare your real life to those fantasies, you're gonna set yourself up for being disappointed. Right. Um, the truth is, is that real life is so much richer than that. Well, that's a great note to end on a nice little full circle about, you know, life is complicated, so yeah, right? stop comparing to movies. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Gordon Levitt, seriously, it's always an honor to talk with you. Likewise, Thank you for the man. extra time, I really Thank appreciate you. it. You're a good guy. Good, good talking so much, to you. I appreciate it.